Hello, welcome to another session with Forays into Norundrin. Sorry, Forays into Norundrin. Um, which I played for a bit uh, last week. I wasn't sure if I was going to leave that as a one-off, but I was in the mood to play it today, and I was already sitting here recording some other stuff, so why the hell not? And people seemed to think it was reasonably not unpleasant watching it. Um, I should mention, actually, that last time round, I did actually insert some music into the background, during editing, but then took it out, because it just seemed to jar with the rest of the game somehow. But if you'd like for me to <clears throat> insert some music from something else into the background here, then let me know and I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can find something suitable. But like a lot of free roguelikes, which means most roguelikes, it doesn't have any sound. So, um, unfortunately, we're just kind of on our own with this. So, let's get stuck in, and of course we're going to hit A to start a new game. Go! Enter name. <clears throat> well, and uh, yes, I may clear my throat occasionally, because I still have a cold, so slightly congested. Just be glad I'm not sneezing into the mic. Enter name. Well, I think last time we were Stan, were we not? Could be mistaken about that. But let's continue naming our characters after sci-fi type characters. And let's go with ugh, Farscape Reference. Select a trait. Which do we want? I'm going to go again with C um, for low light vision because it does help sneaking around without our torch out all the time. Having said that, I'm going to start with my torch out all the time. Okay, so we've got our first try. I'm not going to explain all of the things as I did last time, because hopefully you remember enough from the first time round to know sort of how the shrines work and things. So, uh, this one was on its own, so there was no rivalry between this and another shrine to choose from. Um, what do we want? Distract could be handy. Um, I'm not convinced. Disarm Trap is probably the better one, so actually I think I'll go with that. B, and then we'll accept that. All right, let's move on. Um, and there's the exit to the next floor already. You might remember that we can auto explore here, so I'll probably do that at some point. Uh, right, that enemy clearly knows we're here, so let's switch to full plate for the combat. Come on, Ugh, yeah, down you go. Come on, Ugh. run away. Come on, there, good. All right, um, and now back, of course, to our lightweight gear. And the dagger, I guess. And I will actually put the torch away now and try to sneak around. I almost missed these two shrines here. What have we got? Defense and spirit. Let's go defense. I do favor the defense one. Um, silent chainmail is a good one. We did manage to get that last time. So we'll start towards that. It only requires two shrine uses, so it's relatively easy to get. Uh, that's a trap just there, darkness trap, which shouldn't make too much difference since we've put our torch away anyway, but even so we'll avoid it for the time being. Okay, not much action going on here. Um, Rune of Time, not sure what that does, but I'll take it. Blood Moth doesn't know we're here. Let's kill it. Ugh. You critically hit it, and it's stunned. Finish it off. Yeah. Okay, treasure chest. Rune of Passage. Um, not sure. Also, did I leave my pointer on the screen? I think I may have. Alright. Um, so, let's brave this trap. We don't have much choice. Click. Surge of Darkness. But again, it's not that big a deal. Oh no, we're going to have to change our gear for the skeleton. No, we don't want to start walking. That was a key error. Alright, switch to sword. Uh, sorry, mace for the skeleton. And plate mail. Let's take it down. Come on. Yeah. Okay, so we did beat it, but we're down to a maximum of 70 health at the moment. Which isn't terrible, actually. Um, but it is quite a lot lost for, what, two, three combats? We'll go back to... Oop, I chose the sword. I meant the dagger. 
We'll go back to sneaking around for the time being. See if we can kill this bat before it notices us. No, it bit us already. And we've got another skeleton, so it's back to mace and full plate. Here we go. Alright, so we managed to get away with 51 health there, so we can regenerate to 60, which you know, isn't too bad. Maximum of, or a, an overall of 10 health lost from our maximum there. So that's okay, it's tolerable. Uh, spotted a trap at the south there. Not a big deal. And the remaining shrines. Shrine of combat. Oh, crap! Another skeleton! How did I not see that? Was that me? Did I just not spy it in the corner of the room? Alright. We need to finish off the skeleton. We're almost dead here, actually. We did destroy it, though. Do we want shrine of combat, or do we want shrine of magic? Hmm... Mm. Shrine of Magic would actually give us a spell. Alright, alright. Shrine of Magic. So, which one do we want? Student's Luck. Casting a spell of higher level than your magic skill will now only drain your magic reserves 50% of the time. That's a little confusing. I don't really get it. Let's go with Master's Edge. More damaging. Your first spell is more damaging. Of course it requires four levels to activate, but that's okay. It gives us a spell. Shine doubles your torch's radius, but we're not really using it. We tried Force Palm a couple of times in the last video, and that worked pretty well, but let's go with Immolate for a change of pace. Ignite an enemy. It's not clear how much direct damage is inflicted, but um, I think... Even so, it's worth taking. I have dabbled with it a little bit off-screen. Okay. Well, off-camera, I should say. Now, we're about to go downstairs, so remember to rest to regain a lot of our missing health, so we can now get back up to 70, which isn't fantastic. I'd prefer 80, but never mind. Can't be helped. Let's descend. Okay, so. First things first. Let's just wander. I'm going to hit auto-explore here. A bowler whirls towards you and you're slowed by it. Um, okay, well I suppose I'll get my combat gear on. There's something there. Is that a blue pea? I can't see it that well against the dark background. The skulking killer hits you. Well, it's certainly skulking. That's for sure. Let's kill it. Kill it! Wow, it's really doing a number on us. Took us down to 30 here. We may have to rest again before much longer. Um, so, change our equipment back again. Continue to sneak around. Okay, what's this thing? Bandage. I've never found a use for them, but I'll take it. Darkness Dweller notices you, which of course means we have to switch to our serious business gear. Kill it! Kill it! Okay, um, we're down to 12 health. I'm going to try using our new spell. That's the wrong button. Immolate. Yeah. Extremely damaged Darkness Dweller. Possibly not the best use of the spell, though, so let's not. Let's just kill it with our sword. And then, oh, man. We're almost dead. We are dead. Okay. Um, if anyone wants to examine my equipment or inventory, I guess you can. It's there. Should have thought to use the um, Potion of Healing, or indeed the Rune of Blinking, but I did not. So, let's get out of there and start a new game. Since naming ourselves after John Crichton didn't do us many favours, uh, let's go with um, someone from something else. Someone ineffectual. Rimmer. Go. And this time I'm going to go with... <sighs> Do I want low light vision again? Shall I try being tanky? I seem to keep doing quite badly with the stealthy runes. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with toughness and be tanky this time. Sword and armour on. Yeah. Okay. So actually, I do need to put my super armour on if I'm going to do that. Okay. And basically, so far, everything can see us, but we're also putting it down fairly quickly. There's the exit already, but of course there are several shrines. And chests! Uh, find a potion of cloaking. Okay. Rune of Time. Still don't know what Rune of Time does. Oh, God. 
Look at all those traps. How am I going to get through there? I think I basically can't without walking over them. Uh, can I get in through this side? Yes. Oh, I stepped on a trap anyway, I think. You can see it says a high-pitched ringing sound reverberates from above you. I think basically that means all the enemies will know where we are now. You find an orb of quick fire. Uh, I don't know what that does. Oh, crap. Skeleton. Okay, that means mace. And then kill it! Kill the skeleton! Okay. We're down to 70 again. 70 health seems to be the magic number for us here. Shrine of defense. Shrine of magic. Uh, uh, okay, let's go with magic. Um, purely so that we can have another go with the immolate immolate spell. I emphasised that oddly because I was going to say immolation, but it's actually immolate. Uh, okay. I'm not auto-exploring at the moment because I keep forgetting to. Okay, what have we got here? Shrine of Combat. Shrine of Spirit. I think combat is going to be our one, really. Do we want Quick Draw or Lethality? Your chance to score a critical hit increases by 10%. Or we could go for Lunge, of course. I think the Lunge ability could be useful. Hell, even Drive Back could be useful, but I think Quick Draw is probably the most useful and the easiest to attain. It would be very beneficial to not lose a turn when I'm changing equipment to go into combat, particularly when a skeleton suddenly lunges round the corner, as they tend to do. The dungeon is still and silent. I think when it says that it means we've taken out all the enemies on a particular floor. I think. Okay, nothing of note down here. Avoiding that trap there. What have we got down here? Any more chests? Another shrine. That'll do. Shrine of Stealth. While we're not playing a stealth build. Um, disarm Trap. Because it would be useful to have Disarm Trap for situations like that room up there that's absolutely riddled with the bastards. What's this thing? Orb of Freezing. Again, don't know what it does. But I should really make an effort to try and remember to use these items rather than just lugging them around with me. Even if I don't know what their function is, I can at least try them out. So, have a rest. We're at 70 already, so we should be almost back up to full health once we've rested. 85? And then, of course, we can wait until it reaches 90. So, yeah, almost full health. Let's go down. So, the tank seems to be going a lot better than our stealth run did. Still using the mace at the moment, I believe. Yeah, basically just so that I have it out when a skeleton comes for us. Um, I think it's less damaging than the sword. Weapon 3d6... Bashing weapon. 3d6 slashing weapon. Oh no, it does the same damage as the sword. Um, and it helps us fight skeletons. So for the time being at least, there's really no reason not to use the mace. Alright. Nothing particularly remarkable going on around here. Hoping to find more shrines of course. Always hoping to find more shrines. Chest will do. Rune of passage. Still don't know what they do. Um... Educated guess would be maybe something like they let us pass through a wall. Something like that. Or they drop us down another floor, maybe. But I'm not certain until I try using one. Okay. Still no shrines at this point. How are we going to get past that trap? Can't disarm it yet because we don't actually have that feat. We only have one level. Fuck! Okay, let's use Immolate here. Uh, where is it? Z. There we go. Immolate that bastard. Go! You cast Immolate. The cultist starts to catch fire. Come on, run away and let it hopefully burn to death. Yes, it did in fact burn to death. And now it's down to just the one last guy. Oh god, he set me on fire. This is bad. He also died. I think he's set himself on fire, which is pretty grim. Oh god, we're almost out of health. Alright, let's use our... Would all the freezing work? Let's try Potion of Healing first to get some health back, and then try F. All the freezing on our self. Yes, I know I'm standing there. That's the idea. Alright, beside us. You're on fire. You're unburnt. You attempt to break free. You're on fire. The ice breaks. So, 
we're on fire and encased in ice. Uh, not really sure how to deal with being on fire then. There doesn't seem to be any way to recover from it. Let's try Rune of Time, see what it does. Time stops, you're on fire, you die. Okay. So, A, start a new game. Enter name, Boris. No particular Boris, just a Boris. Uh, none of these seem to make all that much difference. Hmm. I know I didn't use the bow enough. Let's go with keen eyes. And put our torch away. Get our bow out and try to be more of a projectile person. Shoot it. Shoot. No, oh, I can't fire when it's so close. Alright, well, get the mace out. Get the armour on. Ah, then beat it down. Uh, uh, yeah. Actually sustained a lot of damage there. Which isn't brilliant. You know, I'm, I'm just going to get the torch out. And I'm going to be tanky again, but I'm going to try using the bow as well. My initial thought about the bow, as this guy catches up with me, uh, uh, was um, to be stealthy with it. But there's no reason that you can't also be tanky with it, I think. Weaken enemies before they reach you. It doesn't have to be sneaky. Oh my god, that's a lot of traps. I would imagine almost all of the floor spaces in here are full of traps. So I'm going to wait. Yeah. I was going to say wait and uh, see if we'd spot more. And yeah, basically the whole floor. The only way to get through this, essentially, is to be able to disarm them or just run through the bastards. I don't think the chest is worth it, frankly. And there's no way you can have the ability to disarm all those things on the first floor anyway. Very harsh. All right. So we've got Shrine of Magic. Um, immolate. I felt Immolate wasn't that great. Um, I mean, it did kill one of those cultists, but I didn't feel like it was spectacularly useful. Um, I feel like Force Palm is probably more useful. Could go for one of the ones with a higher fail rate, of course. Freeze might work. Um, Blink might work. Lightning Bolt. Hmm. Let's go back to Force Palm for now. Because um, that was at least tolerably useful, I think. Whereas Immolate just seemed like trouble. Um, skeleton's approaching, but I think, yeah, we already have the mace out. So let it get closer and then bash it down! Urgh. All right. So the shrine here is Shrine of Defense, or we've got Shrine of Spirit. We always go for defense, so let's try Spirit for a change. Conviction! Uh, bonus Spirit. Improves the amount by which your natural recovery can heal you. Oh yes, that one, that's quite good. Feel no pain is reasonably good. Taking damage increases your movement speed. And that only requires two, so let's go with that. Boiling Blood. Okay. And another pair of shrines. Shrine of Combat. Shrine of Stealth. <laughs> no contest. Shrine of Combat it is. And we'll try for quick draw one more time. I would say let's um, take different ones to mix it up a bit. But considering how seldom we actually get any of these feats, I don't think it makes that much difference. Okay. All the freezing. Uh, well, we tried that out the last time. Could be good. But we didn't really get a chance to use it properly. And I think that's almost it for this floor. There's that unfinished corridor at the bottom, so use Auto Explore to check it out. Oh. Hello. And another chest. So it was, it was at least worth coming down here. Scroll of Detect Monster. Rune of Blinking. I need to remember to use the runes of Blinking. Um... Because they are, or well, should be, if I understand them correctly, a handy method of escape if combat's going badly. And yet, as with so many games of this type... Oh no, rest first, well-reminded game. As with so many games of this type, I tend to forget my extra resources like that. Down the stairs, alright. 
So, what's up first? Auto explore. Something growls. It's that growly thing. Whoa, okay, the goblin set off a grenade trap. Get back. Huh, I think we managed to avoid the explosion. The goblin survived it. Little shit. Alright, grab the orb of darkness. I don't really want it. I mean, if it produces darkness, it's probably not that useful to us. But still, let this be... Oh no, it's one of those bramble things. Okay, so get the bow out, because they're immobile. And just shoot it until it dies. There we go. And then get the mace back out. On we go. So we've got a rune of passage. You know what? You know what? I'm going to stand here and I'm going to use the rune of passage just to find out what it does. G. Which direction? That way. Yeah. Okay. So it transports you through a wall, essentially. So fight this bugger. Uh, we've got a potion of clarity. Don't know what that does. I would guess it eliminates confusion or something of that nature, but not sure. Never had cause to try using it. Okay. And let's carry on. Another goblin, but not too stressed about that. Rune of blinking. Again, another escape thing that I really have to make sure I actually use when things are going badly. Uh, okay. Not seeing much in the way of shrines, which is disappointing. Hopefully there'll be some around somewhere. Hmm. Back to auto-explore, I think. Huh? Apparently we've cleared out the whole floor. Oh well, that was an anticlimactic floor. So, down the stairs. But first, rest. And this will take us up to 90, because we took mercifully little damage on that floor. Now let's go. Okay. The rooms and corridors disappear from your surroundings as you reach a large natural cavern. So, I didn't remember if I've got to this on camera before. I know I've got to it off camera. Uh, but basically, you get to this point and there's sort of rubble lying around. <clears throat> the swordsman shouts! Oh no. Let him advance on me. And then... Use Force Palm on him. Sparks fly from your fingers. Well, it doesn't seem to have helped. But we did kill him, so that's alright. Scroll of Detect Monsters. You know, I'm going to use that. See if there are more uh, swordsmen around. And we have three of those, so might as well use one. There we go. And it reveals what they are. So there is another swordsman off to the left here. Sort of the, the northwest area. And here he comes. Come on. I don't think he knows I'm here. Alright, let's put the torch away. Get our lightweight armour on. Get a bow out. And see if we can sneak... Oh, there's another light source of some sort up here. Oh well, let's shoot the guy. Oh, he's a robed zealot, not a swordsman. And now we're going to have to switch back to our standard equipment for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh. The robed zealot casts Holy Shield. And he looks drained, so he's cast a defensive spell on himself. Let's use our Force Palm on him. Boom! You strike the robed zealot. His shield burns me! Holy crap! Wow. So that that was pretty bad. Future reference. Try to avoid enemies that cast holy shields on themselves. Another scroll of detect monster, so no shortage of those things. That looks like a shrine. Yeah, shrine of spirit. Let's take that. Uh, so we can actually get a, our second and final level in boiling blood here. Taking damage briefly increases your movement speed. So that should make it easier to run away if um, a combat starts going badly and we don't have a blink rune or whatever. Or if I completely forget that I have one. All right, another rune of blinking. So we're now down to 50 health, which is not brilliant. The Shrine of Magic glows faintly. 
Well, let's take another level of Master's Edge, which gives us another spell. Um, our chance of casting Freeze has improved. In fact, our chance of casting everything has improved. So we have no fail rate for Immolate and Shine. We have a low fail rate for Freeze. Scorch, 2d6, 5 damage ranged. That might be worth taking. Ranged fire damage. Okay. Oh, there was another one there. That could have been a better shrine. I didn't see it. Oh! Oh, well. Shrine of defense and shrine of stealth. Defense. Wait, we did we get stealth before? No, but I think we didn't get defense either. Oh, well. Can't help... The shrines were dealt. Um, I would say full defense. Standing still and letting an enemy approach you increases your defensive abilities. Okay. And whip out the bow to deal with the bramble, of course. As usual. Change back to the mace. And then auto explore. I suspect there isn't a lot more to do on this floor. Okay. Deal with this guy. Dream warrior. Oh my god! The dream warrior is suddenly standing all around you. Let's use our force palm on him. Oh god. Alright. So are they all? Like, proper warriors. I assumed some of them were hallucinations, but now I'm not so sure. Okay, let's use one of our four runes of blinking to escape. Yeah, that worked. I'd like to rest before we go downstairs, but they might come upon us while we're resting. Wait, the spell exchange shrine? Is that is that a thing? Trade one of your spells for another? Wow. Okay, well, no, but it's useful to know. All right, let's hit R to rest. Okay, and now we can wait to get back up to 70. So that's something. And now I think we should just forget about the Dream Warriors. Particularly since that's a dreadful song by the cheesy 80s metal band Dokken. And just go downstairs. All right, you pass through a broken gate and enter the remnants of a fortress. I haven't been in the remnants of a fortress before, as far as I remember. Okay, there's a robed zealot approaching. You know what? Let's try using our new Scorch. Sparks fly from your fingers. Well, it said ranged. I suppose it didn't specify a range. Scroll of magic map, okay. Wow, that thing did a lot of damage to us. Do we have the wrong armour on? No, we have proper armour. It was just an extremely damaging enemy. Okay. Orb of freezing. Alright, but I'd rather have something health related, because we're down to a mere 40 here. We have found the exit already, so that's something. But I really need... Oh, crap. Scorching Bolt hits you. Alright. Um, what am I going to do here? What do I have? Runes of blinking, detect monster, darkness, clarity, regeneration. That could be useful. Let's use the regeneration. Sorry, I had to um, get my laptop off standby there. I guess that can interfere with recording. Your blood tingles and you regenerate. Where's that enemy gone? There it is. Get back here. Oh, I'm on fire again. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, died. <laughs> I didn't even notice it happening. I really don't know how to deal with being on fire. It's a serious problem. Let's have one more go. And we're going to be Steve. Which is a little odd, because I have a friend called Steve. But never mind, it was the first name that came to mind. Alright, let's go with Magical Blood for faster health recovery. And let's whip out our mace and our full plate. And march around like the bold, adventurous hero that we are not. A bold adventurous hero that can't kill a bat, evidently. Come on. Come on. It's a bat. I mean, yeah, large bat, but still just a bat. 
I mean, a large bat can't be bigger than a small cat, surely. It's not a giant bat, just a large one. Alright, Wolf did quite a lot of damage to us, which is not great. Goblins is ever a kind of a problem. Pick up the Rune of Time. Hmm. Potion of Clarity, not brilliant. Okay. The Blood Moth isn't a big problem, usually. And we have Magic, and we have Spirit. Going to say Magic. Uh, shall we go with a different one of these? Arcane Shield. Drains your magic reserves to shield yourself. It's an active ability. But I don't know how good it's going to be. Yeah, stick to what we know for the time being. Now, which of these do I want? I mean, maybe... Maybe we should go for Blink for its escape abilities. I mean, not that having several Blink scrolls helped out much the last time around. It would be useful to have some sort of... Wow. Okay, when I said one more go, I went one more... I meant one more decent length go. Clearly Steve just doesn't fare very well. Um, alright. In that case, I've just been watching the Sarah Connor Chronicles, so let's be John Connor. And let's have... A uh, long stride, simply because it's one I haven't really tried out. Apparently, let's move faster. Mace and heavy armor. I know there might be some people watching this thinking, Stop choosing the mace and heavy armor! Be sneaky! But, I mean, you've seen what happens. I tend to have more success being tanky than being sneaky. Rune of blinking, so that will at least help with escapes, provided I'm not set on fire, because fire is just instant death. Well, not instant, but, you know, guaranteed death. Phantom Constrictor? Oh man. Okay, let our health return to 80. Okay, shrines. This is what it's all about. Shrine of Stealth, Shrine of Defense. Yes, defense. This time, I'm not bothered about silent chain mail. I mean, I, I suppose maybe, because it would allow me to walk around with more decent armor on without attracting so much attention. But no, I think I'm going to go with full defence again. Maybe one day I'll actually gain that feat. Skeleton's approaching. Let's take it down. And we've got another shrine here. This is Shrine of Spirit. Apologies for any noise there. I just hit my pop shield by mistake. Uh, boiling blood didn't feel like it helped all that much the last time. So, I'm going to say Enduring Soul. Harder to actually get because it requires four levels, but I think it would be a much more useful, practical ability to have. Alright, let's auto-explore. Goblin. Come on. Just mash him. Oh, auto-explore set off a trap. A gas trap, no less. Let's just leg it, then hide here until the gas recedes. Uh, wolf has arrived. Oh god, health is going very badly. We still haven't even found the exit. I say just as I find the exit. Okay. Blood moth doesn't really worry me. Orb of sunlight. Uh, could have asked for better. At least we've got a shrine of combat here. Um... Let's go for quick draw again, because that really would be a very useful ability, and yet I never actually get it. Wow, we're down to six health, because I keep setting off traps. Should have been much more cautious about coming in here. Uh, potion of cloaking. I would assume that makes me invisible, so maybe I should just drink that. Oh god, fire trap! Crap! Oh, it's all over! The horror! Go downstairs, quickly! No. We're finished. Ugh. Well, I think that series of disastrous runs has been enough for this time. Thanks for watching me badly. Let's play Forays into Norendrin. Rejoin me the next time as I continue sporadically uploading occasional episodes of this when the mood takes me. Um, but expect to see more of the usual Wazhack and Delver coming up any time now. So, thanks for watching. 
and I will see you the next time round. Bye for now.